the proper order from left to right is salad fork, dinner fork, guitar cable, extra strings, and giant mug of beer. Hails, minions and mortals, this is Fang from Lords of the Trident, and today we don our dinner jackets, mind our P's and Q's, and talk about etiquette. Gig etiquette, that is. Every social situation has a different form of etiquette related with it. Rules like don't swear at customers, don't fart in a crowded elevator, and don't bring your boombox blaring avant-garde Norwegian crust punk onto a crowded bus are things that most people should know. A lot of people learn these rules organically or via their parents, but some people just don't seem to understand these unwritten rules. And regardless of the intent behind it, these people are rightfully labeled as jerks. Now, as an independent band, you do not want to be labeled as a jerk. Your success directly depends on your relationship with other bands and venues. Managers get to be jerks, booking agents get to be jerks, but you and the members of your band need to come off as the nicest, sweetest people in the entire world. Not only does following these rules make you seem nice, it also makes you seem professional. Being professional is extremely important because venues and managers and all sorts of industry people would much rather deal with someone who is professional than not. And you and I both know there's a ton of bands out there that are just playing for kicks and not interested in growing their business in any sort of meaningful way. Also, those bands are not interested in getting better, so they're not watching these videos, so we can talk crap about them, it's okay. The venue owner's profession is running the venue. The sound guy's profession is not making you sound like a wet fart. When you act professional and not just like a bunch of guys in the garage, you're validating the staff's hard work and showing everyone that you're serious about everyone's combined success for the night. So, let's make these unwritten rules written. Rule number one, be on time. Ugh. This one is so dead simple, I really shouldn't have to list it, but I've run into so many bands that can't seem to show up on time. I mean, think of it this way, right? If you hired a plumber and the plumber said, I'll be here at 2 p.m. and he didn't show up until like three or four, would you be pissed? Of course you would. Would you ever hire that plumber again? Maybe, but you'd probably look for alternatives first. Punctuality goes hand in hand with professionalism. And punctuality doesn't stop as soon as you've hit the venue. You should communicate with the venue owner and the other bands ahead of time and determine the following things. What time do we need to arrive? When's load in? When do we need to be finished loading in? Is there a sound check? If so, what time is it at? What time do doors open to the public? How long of a set do you want us to play? How long is the switchover between bands? Uh, what time does the show start? Okay, no, no, really, like what time does the show actually start? If the flyer says show at 9 p.m., does that mean music starts at 9 p.m. on the dot? Or does that mean we're gonna open the doors at 9 p.m. and kind of wait until there's a few people in here and maybe start at 9.30? What time do you expect the headlining band to finish? This is a polite way to say, what time do we get paid? When does the venue close? On the road, make sure you either have a smartphone or the venue's phone number written down somewhere. That way, when you blow a tire on the way to the venue, you can call let them know that you'll be a little late. There is no excuse for lack of communication. This isn't the 1970s anymore. Everyone's got a cell phone. Of the times listed, the most important ones are arrival time, load-in time, and set time. And of those three, set time is the most important. If you are given a 40 minute set, don't go over. Just don't. Don't play that encore song. I don't care how good you are or how well you're doing that night. Do not do it. The manager, the booking agent, and the other bands will hate you. And there's nothing worse than telling a headlining band that they only have 10 or 15 minutes to play because all of the other bands went late. This has happened to us at least three times, and it is the absolute worst thing in the world. A good approach here is to under budget your set time. If you're given a half an hour set, try planning for a 25 minutes instead. That'll give your guitarist time to break a string, or it'll give you time to go on that rant about how credit card companies are secretly controlling the global fluoride levels in our drinking water, you weirdo. There are also internal band-specific time constraints to consider. For example, when should I expect everyone to arrive to pack up the gear? Should I expect the drummer and bassist to arrive half an hour late? like they always do. Oh, and a good tip here that has worked for me for many years is to always tell the perpetually late members uh, that you're gonna be loading up a half an hour before you actually want to load up. 
Uh, that way they get there on time every time. Will everybody be returning to the practice space after the show to help unload? How long is the drive? How long is the drive with traffic? How long is the drive with traffic, rest stops, stops for beef jerky and Mountain Dew for the drummer and a decent meal for the rest of us? Do we need to eat on the road or could we potentially eat at the venue once we get there? Will we even have time to eat? All of these things combined can impact your arrival time. Always make sure to give yourself more time than you think you need because you probably will need it. And hey, even if you don't need it, nobody ever complained when a band showed up too early. Rule number two, the out of town band always plays in between the locals. If you're a non-famous traveling band that doesn't have a whole lot of draw in the city that you're playing in, you should never ever be expected to play last. The best place to play is dead center, in between two local bands. If you play first, people are still arriving and coming in. If you play last, people are turning into pumpkins at the end of the night and leaving, or worse still, they've already seen the, the local band that they came here to see and now they're scooting out the door. Playing second allows you the biggest crowd, the most exposure, uh, the most merch sales potentially, and the most new fans. Also, bands that create shows and invite traveling bands, do not ever, ever invite more traveling bands than local bands on your show unless those traveling bands have a gigantic draw in your city. I've been to shows where there's been mostly traveling bands uh, that have not been in the city before and it was just ghost towns. So the best idea, the best ratio is uh, a two to one, right? Two local bands for every traveling band that's coming in. At the most one to one, but don't go over that. Okay, quick anecdote. We set up a show with a really fantastic traveling band that had never played our city before, and we had them going second in between us and an another really great uh, local opening band. However, when that local opening band showed up and found out they were playing first and not second, they threw the biggest hissy fit I had ever seen a band play and demanded that they play later in the night or else they were gonna pack up and go home. I saw that, the management saw that, the booking agent saw that, and that did not register very well with us. And you know, maybe it's come back to bite them because I haven't seen them playing any shows maybe in the last year. Speaking of out of town bands, rule number three, the out of town band gets gas money before anyone else gets paid. When you're the local band on a show, how much did it cost you to get to the venue? Maybe a dollar or two in gas? Want to venture a guess as to how much gas, lodging, food, and miscellaneous expenses of being on the road cost for the traveling band to get to the venue? Probably a heck of a lot more. Ask the traveling band how much it would cost to cover their gas and expenses, and try to give them at least 20 bucks more than that, then pay the other bands. If you can't cover their gas and expenses, just give them the whole door. If the local bands go home empty-handed, it's their fault for not bringing out more people or selling more merch. This is one of those what goes around comes around sort of situations. If you always follow this rule, the traveling bands will remember how they were treated when they were playing a show with you. And when you go to play a show with them, they will treat you in a similar fashion. We take care of our friends, they take care of us. Rule number four, in this order, play your set, load your gear, then get wasted or don't, do not. I repeat, do not get wasted before your set. Get wasted during your set. Get wasted before your equipment is all loaded up. Get wasted before getting your money. Get everyone else wasted and then realize you don't have a designated driver. Pass out in the bathroom stall at the venue. Puke all over the floor at the venue. Now, I have done none of these things, but I've seen all these things happen firsthand. And in the past, we did have some members in the band who did some of these things. I had to apologize profusely to the venue's management and beg and plead to be allowed to come back. You wanna be a professional? Then act like it. Look, if you need a drink or two to loosen up before a performance, that's fine. Just don't do anything that would adversely affect your performance. And think about it this way, when you're in the club, technically you are being employed by the venue's owner. And I don't know about you, but my job does not let me get wasted while I'm on the clock. Even if you're the best band in the whole world, the venue owner and the other bands you play with will remember you for the worst thing you did, not the best. The bands that puked on the floor and passed out in the stall never played the venue again. Look, don't be a dick, just get wasted at home, it's way cheaper. Rule number five, headlining sucks, but sometimes you gotta take one for the team. <laughs> 
Gone are the days of hoping for your band's name in marquee lights as the headliner of a show. Let's face it, headlining sucks, especially if you're not famous. Let's assume that 70% of your fan base are normal adults with 9 to 5 day jobs. What time do you think they get sleepy? 11, 10.30, 11.30? What time do you think you go on if you're the headliner at a certain bar show? Midnight? If you're lucky, right? So by the time you hit the stage, most of the people are either gone or sleepy and thinking about leaving. And unless you provide free uh, Red Bull IV drips, there's not a whole lot you're gonna be able to do about it. It's just biology. So how do you combat this? You really can't. Somebody has to go last. And if it's a local show, it's probably gonna be you most of the time. Don't complain. If you take one for the team, the team is way more willing to take one for you in the future. Also, when your band gets to a point where you're pretty established and you have a big fan base, you're almost always gonna have to headline in your hometown. If possible, ask the bar owner if he or she can start the show a little bit earlier. A lot of the venue owners are starting to get hip to the fact that, you know, maybe having their main draw go on at one in the morning isn't the best way to promote their beer sales. Rule number six. Introduce yourself before the show and thank them after the show. The sound guy and the venue manager need to be your two best friends for the night. They're the ones that have invited you here and are gonna make you sound amazing. So, at the beginning of the night, introduce yourselves, get their name, and tell the sound guy any extra specifications that you might have. At the end of the night, thank the venue owner and the staff for all the hard work they put in, and thank the sound guy for the amazing sound, even if it wasn't amazing. Let them both know, you'd love to come back sometime. You want their impression of you to be, oh geez, he was such a nice man with very polite manners and just the greatest guy. We'd love to have him back again. That'd be super swell. Rule number seven, save the drama for your mama. No bad mouthing at the venue. <laughs> yeah, even if the band that you're playing with is one of the worst bands that you've ever seen in your entire life, don't bad mouth them at the venue. It's unprofessional and uncool to talk about how bad someone is in front of them or their fans. Let their music and their actions speak for themselves. Besides, every band was probably bad at either one show or at some point in their career. I mean, I bet Iron Maiden and Dio had some off nights and you would not dare talk bad about them to their face now, would you? You have no idea who someone is going to be or is going to be associated with three years from now. So just don't talk bad about them in front of them. Once the gear's loaded up, the windows are rolled up and you're far away from the venue in the safety of your own van, then you can bitch about how terrible the opening bands were and also keep that crap off of social media. Rule number eight, communicate, communicate, communicate. Always, 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 always communicate, right? If you're gonna be late, Call the venue. If you need something special, let them know ahead of time. Send your input list and your stage plot to the sound guy before the show. I will never fault a band for giving me too much information. Rule number nine, when all else fails, don't be a dick. Borrowing equipment and it breaks, fix or replace it. Other band needs a string, here you go. Change for a five, yep, you got it. Once you're done loading in, help the other bands. In this business, your friends are everything, your contacts, are everything, and maintaining a good relationship with them is extremely important. Wanna know how to get the opening slot for that big band that's coming through next week? You gotta know the guy who can put you there. I have friends that I've made through this who would give the absolute shirts off their backs for me, and you know what? I would do the exact same for them. Before you act, step outside of yourself and ask, how would I react to my own approach? Always strive to forge stronger friendships give constructive feedback, and make business better for everybody. By helping others, you're gonna help yourself tenfold. Any gig etiquette rules that I missed, let me know in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching. This show was made 100% possible by the people who donate to our Patreon. So if you wanna see more Words of Fang, or you just wanna help our dreams of world conquest, then sign up today at patreon.com slash lords of the trident. We will see you next time.